Hello, everybody. It's a centralized day with another quarterly presentation. The first one I have done at the start of June, which was 2.5 months ago. But then I have done also one special presentation centered all around the sentiment. I have done that at the start of July, which was 1.5 months ago. So some months have passed since my first presentation and also 1.5 months since the second one. So I think the best way how to start this one is to have is to look back at the conclusions from my previous presentations to reflect on them and to see how they have aged and there they are so this is the conclusion from July 2024 um where i talked uh, basically about that um, all altcoins except ethereum lost pull market support bands uh, normally, I would be satisfied or I would say or I would call Q trillion coin market cap sideways, a Q trillion coin market cap, but that would not uh, likely reset meme sentiment uh, and that for the memes to be fully erased and reset, we would have to crash unexpectedly uh, up to 1.2 trillion coin market cap, probably after spot ETF approval. Another conclusion from the June 2024, so the older one, there I talked about that the technicals are good, excellent even, but sentiment is greedy with meme season upon us. Uh, and then I said that uh, I find the sentiment reset in April incomplete and thus likely to return to 50 and 60,000 um, in order to have uh, end cycle parabolum. To have end cycle I think I might have, might have made a mistake in this sentence because it doesn't make sense. <laughs> or maybe maybe what I wanted to say that in order to have later... Oh, yes, I know what I wanted to say. <laughs> oh my, I'm sorry for this formulation, but this sense that the sentence actually means that we need to return to 50 to 60,000 in order to have or to, to be able to come to the end of the bull cycle, to the to end cycle parable. Summer alt season is looming. Uh, return to 50 should happen once alt season plays out. So after looking at all of these uh, conclusions, we can say that I predicted correctly crash after the ETF, Ethereum spot ETF approval. I predicted also a return to 50 to 60,000. Uh, also, I predicted the possible decline of meme coins. However, I completely failed when it came to predicting alt season around the launch of Ethereum spot ETF. So this is something I'm going to evaluate forward because I think this is my Achilles heel because this is not a first time in my life and in my career where I would be hindered uh, and it would be to my de detriment to be too much of an altcoin lover and waiting for an alt season, hoping for an alt season, calling for an alt season. Um, anyway, I'm going to get to it. Uh, and then the last uh, the last uh, point that I'm making here that we cannot yet conclude my super bear call 1.2 trillion. Uh, that is too early to draw a conclusion um, of whether this is actually happening in the coming months or not. Uh, so I, I, I identified alt season expectation as my most uh, vulnerable point. Uh, also, I wanted to add that the meme, uh, uh, the meme coin reset is ongoing, that most are correcting since May. Only few Solana memes uh, that uh, uh, actually still had their season in June and even in July. So even after I made this sentiment presentation about meme coins, how they are going to decline, like to my absolute astonishment, uh, I have seen so many Solana meme coins having new all-time highs. Absolute craziness. Anyway, um, and yes, also I'm adding right now that I'm not longer sure if 1.2 trillion coin market cap will be needed for the mentioned full meme coin reset because some meme coins have corrected quite quite nicely, really. And if we were to return to 53,000, let's say, okay, because we are 60,000, 61,000 right now. If we were to return to, to low 50s, like the meme coins were even harder correct then. So actually the sideways around 2 trillion actually could be enough for this purpose as well. 
So, and because I have this, uh, I have identified me calling for an all season this summer to be my biggest mistake and costed me the most. And I have identified to be the my most vulnerable point. I have decided to to devote the whole section in this presentation, couple of slides, just to the altcoins. And I'm calling this section for well, what is altcoins. Um, I hope you're going to like it. I have I made sure that I made it lighter. Uh, I have included some good <laughs> some good altcoin uh, memes, <laughs> not meme coins, but memes this time. Um, <laughs> um, this uh, this butcher guy, for instance, he does give me laugh pretty often. Um, but also this picture for those of you who saw the extremely popular South Korean show Squid Games. You know this this guy, you know this character, and you know what he's doing. So anyway, um, in this section, I'm going to talk about Ethereum-based alt season uh, that we didn't have so far this cycle, whole cycle since 2022, like since the, you know, since the bottom of the bear, we did not see that. Uh, and so now, right now it feels like Bitcoin only market from here. And my question is, is it really the case? So let's look for some answers. So this is very interesting. So this is altcoin market cap trend line. Um, so this trend line is where uh, actually the the to the total chew uh, index is feeding uh, values into this trend line, and this trend line is calculated by the very classical default logarithmic regression formula. Uh, for those of you who are a little bit in the maths then you know that this is a normal log regression formula that is used the most, the most often, uh, as far as I know. Um, so, and when you do this, then you are going to discover, have a look at this, have a look, watch this guys, watch this, watch this picture to the bottom right. This is the altcoins and the logarithmic regression of the altcoins. And by this method that I just showed you, when, when you told for two is the, is the feed, then you get that the trend line today is 4 trillion, okay? For the altcoins, the trend line, so the fair value of altcoins should be 4 trillion. And right now, when you look at the index, total Q is 900 billion. But that by itself would not be uh, the shocking thing. Watch, watch this. When you calculate the total one, so ever since the total one, ever since the actually... The, the the crypto the total market cap of all cryptos ever since inception of bitcoin actually so when you calculate that and put that into the log regression and calculate the trend line of that you are going to get the result that the uh the trend line of the total market cap is 3.52 trillion and now just think so what does it mean when altcoins have a log regression trend line? Fair value of altcoins should be 4 trillion and fair value of total market cap is 3.5 trillion. Like, I don't have to explain you that altcoins are included in this total market cap, okay? So this is Bitcoin plus altcoins and, and their fair value should be 3.5 trillion. And the altcoins themselves should be 4 trillion. So this is, in my opinion, mathematical proof of the inflation, how altcoins are overall inflated. And it likely means that the first hyper altcoin bubble in 2018 was the new paradigm hyper bubble. I'm going to show you the next slide. And the only fix that I see to this situation this trend line for the altcoins has to go dramatically down. And it is going down, but it has to keep going down for longer, which means that the altcoins will probably not even reach the fair value, or if even will reach this calculated fair value of 4 trillion, or it, it's even going up. So the next year it's going to be 4 point something, 4.3 for all I know. So the altcoins might never, might not actually reach it, the fair value, even this cycle. 
we are going to stay 70% below it, 80% below it, and maybe then in the next bear market after the cycle is done, 90% below it, who knows? But I think that's the only fix, mathematical fix, that I can see how to solve this anomaly, which is, in my opinion, caused by hyperinflation of the value of all coins. And this is what I'm talking about. So this is the bubble of 2017, 2018. I'm also giving a credit on HeyXP on Twitter, saying hi, we're watching. Uh, he made this uh, log regression, so credit goes to him. So this is the total chew, okay? This is the feed of total chew, and this is the comparison of what you can see this chart. This is comparison versus their trend line. This is just gives you an idea how much altcoins were overvalued in 2018, you know? And like, have a look at the basic numbers, guys. And I've been blind to this for way too long, to my, de to my detriment, I wish I wasn't. I, I would have been probably better off, even though I have to say that I can't complain um, uh, so far actually, but, I would have probably been still better off if I wasn't blinded by my love for altcoins to all of these facts. Like, have a look at the basic numbers. Altcoins went from 50 million in, they were 50 million in 2016, I think. And in only less than two years, they went to 400 billion. You know, like, that's 8,000x in less than two years. And that's for the whole index. But uh, also, uh, that's another argumentation we can have that the index performs better than individual altcoins because the index is, is, is getting constantly new and new and new and new and new liquidity from new projects. So the index stays strong but the individual altcoins are actually not as strong and actually go down. But uh, the total altcoin index total to an 8,000x from 50 million to 400 billion, it's as much. So like, how, like look at that because 400 billion, it's actually 400,000 million, right? So uh, this is, and obviously, and I don't know how did I see it for so long. How could I have been so blind for so long? This was obviously hyper bubble, and that's what's causing still altcoins to be overall still inflated, and 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 the meme coiners are the the altcoin altcoin people altcoiners just like I maybe still am, but. They are just stuck in this notion of 2017 repeating and such a hyper altcoin bubble happening again. They are stuck at that and forever waiting and never selling and forever waiting for it and always crying about not having selling. So like, yeah, maybe there's nothing, nothing, nothing wrong being a hodler, but you have to, you have to make a choice. Like either you're going to be a hodler or either you are going to risk for selling too soon. Like, you know, this is also something I've learned that you have to make a choice. Like you shouldn't be crying about selling too soon if you don't want to be a hodler because that's going to happen to you no matter what you do uh, because you can't hit the top uh, unless you really don't try and, and unless you really get lucky <laughs> once maybe. Anyway, um. Yeah, also I make I make a note here that, that the altcoiners always say that look, altcoins are under uh, undervalued, but they didn't say in 2018 that altcoins are hypervalued. No. Okay, uh Bitcoin dominance. So this is obviously extremely important when it comes to the um when it comes to uh um evaluating altcoins. So, and, and possible alt season, etc. So what I have done, I have just thrown um, a Fibonacci and I have actually measured not the total top of the Bitcoin dominance, but I have actually measured the point. This is weekly, uh, weekly, Fibo, uh, weekly uh, Bitcoin dominance. Um, and I have actually measured from the 
top of the week of the week where it started dramatically falling in 2017 and i and i measured to all the way to the week of the bottom where the bitcoin dominance bottom in 2018 so there is a couple of things that you can see on this you know first of all what you can see immediately is that this fib works and that i have uh, probably um drawn it in a way that is going to be valuable to us because as you can see brutal reaction here good reaction here brutal one good reaction here good reaction here good reaction here every single fib was had a reaction and even then it had a retest to this 0 0.5 again so uh, so many so many touches so many retests so many swings on it it really shows that this chart is probably going to be respecting it to some degree and we can we, we actually could uh gain value from there and um there is actually much, much more that I could talk about. Like very, very, very bearish, very Bitcoin dominance bearish was that it rejected first on this uh, on this extension, and it went, it was going down. It really looked in 2018. It really looked like it was going to go down lower, but then it didn't. Uh, also, pretty bearish is that in a, in a uh, in the recent cycle in 2021, the Bitcoin dominance didn't stop at this extension didn't stop at 50% Bitcoin dominance. It did not stop there, that it actually went below, it went to 40 something percent. That's actually also pretty bearish because it wasn't on the extension. It actually broke the extension and it just actually stayed for uh, like forever, for years. It stayed in between the extensions. So uh, like, yeah. So I'm thinking like here in the in the notes, if you want to read them, I am thinking openly that this could be an, as an ascending wedge and it can only be ascending wedge if we make higher high, okay? So we, we made higher low and we would have to make higher high. And if that was the case, then the obvious target would be this extension, 0 0.786, which has actually never been yet retested since the dominance bottomed at, at 40, 35%, uh, excuse me. So that would be, and that is brutal target, like 83%, it's a Bitcoin maxi target, okay? This is what they have been saying. Uh, but also I've learned to, <laughs> I was forced to respect Bitcoin maxis more as well, uh, because if I had listened to them over the past two years, again, it would have been to my benefit. So <laughs> by self-reflection, um, um, but uh, I don't think that the Bitcoin maxi dream actually comes true and it, it's just too hard also for the dominant because Bitcoin is alone. Bitcoin is one thing, one crypto alone. And it's measured against all the million altcoins. I know we have only 10,000 listed on CoinGecko, but most of the small coins are not listed anyway. And some of the big altcoins like, uh, I don't know, Arbitrum and I don't know how many Ethereum layer 2s are there. They're coming with hundreds of millions. So instantly new and new altcoins are coming from outside into the crypto and bringing their new cap and and increasing the value the, the cap of all altcoins so it's just impossible kind of battle for, and it would be yeah 83 uh, percent is probably just a, a bitcoin maxi wet dream but uh, uh uh it's something to at least give it a thought and i i I actually um, recommend even the altcoin lovers to do that because <laughs> talking from my own experience, I wish I had done that. And like this ascending wedge, it's not completely crazy idea as well. But also as what you can see, another thing from this chart, this is very clear that you can see. The Bitcoin dominance was extremely volatile in 2017, was dropping through the roof. Then in the following three, three years, it was less volatile, although it was pretty volatile in 2021. And ever since 2021, the volatility is diminishing, where in 2021 and 2022, we still had pretty uh, volatile Bitcoin dominance, but ever since 2023, the Bitcoin dominance volatility is really low. And so also that's, that's also why this extension is, I think, uh, just too much because also the volatility should go low, lower, 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 right? 
like the volatility with the b increasing market cap should go lower by logic. And that's why I made this slide for you, which I call Bitcoin dominance art. And I have noticed that Bitcoin dominance over the past two years, which is a not which is a reasonably long time, uh, it's moving in a kind of an arc, you know. So I have drawn that arc for you here, and um, this would be maybe the the most ideal if the dominant if the volatility doesn't change, if Bitcoin dominance all of a sudden because of some I don't know something changes and because of volatility starts breaking up or down. And this this is what I would call the most probable actually scenario at this point. And also after me failing on multiple times, calling for the alt season and just being too altcoin friendly. So let me get to it, okay? So uh, Dominant seems to be making this very slow arc. If true, even a year from now, this is this is what I actually am showing you that the, the, the pinnacle, the peak of this arc seems to be in 2025. So even though I know the altcoiners have been always uh, calling for the top of the uh, Bitcoin dominance, but even in a year from now, if I'm right in this arc, even a year from now, Bitcoin dominance will still be a little bit higher than it is today. Not by much, but a little bit, which is still going to be brutal. And which means that every alt season that is going to be in the meanwhile, like I don't deny that there has to come some kind of an Ethereum based alt season at some point. Every single one that is going to happen in the meanwhile is going to be again underwhelming, where altcoiners will not sell. Altcoiners, altcoiners will sell. Will say that no, this is too little. It's gonna. It's still undervalued. It's gonna go higher. They will not sell, and and. And then the, the Bitcoin dominance comes back to this arc. That's the easy way to put it. But I'm also saying that inevitably dominance is bound to go down because of the weight of new released altcoins, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that the Bitcoin will remain king for many more years still. And I'm going to make a conclusion about the altcoins very, very soon. Uh, but before I do, uh, one more important thing is Ethereum versus Bitcoin, Ethereum versus Bitcoin uh, ratio. So this is uh, obviously a very important chart for the altcoins because, excuse me, because Ethereum being the largest altcoin, kind of like a mother to all altcoins and so many altcoins that are actually useful, like Uniswap, right? Like Uniswap is uh, is super useful, like the decentralized exchanges is exactly, exactly what we need. But we need them really stable, mature, non-hackable, with limit orders that you that are reliable. We need them better than they are today and cheap, of course. But like there is tons of useful stuff on Ethereum um, and a lot of tons of experimental stuff on Ethereum. Um, so Ethereum versus Bitcoin chart, uh, this blue trend line that I have drawn for you that was actually existing for the past four years, that got broken. That got broken and it uh, it rejected. Uh, I'm not now sure this is weekly. I'm not, not, I'm not now sure, but this summer, it was this summer. It actually became a resistance and it, and it rejected and now it is bound. I believe it is bound for this red trend line, which is the absolutely oldest Ethereum Bitcoin trend line I could find on the chart. And <clears throat> that chart, as I'm showing you here in September uh, or, or like the next month is going to be at 0 0.036 or about. So 0 0.036, I think it's a level where uh, there is a tons of and, and, and very good chance for Ethereum to actually rebound versus Bitcoin. And again, the question then is going to be, it is going to just do a small rebound like it did here at the start of 2024. 20, at the start of 2024, Ethereum rebounds versus versus Bitcoin a little bit. Is it going to do a little, little small bounce and they break that trend line? Or is it going to hold that trend line? 
And even if it's going to hold that trend line, like just look at here in 2019. In 2019, it first touched the trend line rebounds and then it touched it again and stayed on it. So it was uh, it was months. It was months where Ethereum was around the trend line. So absolutely no, I don't see any any scenario for super strong rebounds versus Bitcoin from Ethereum. I see the opposite. And that would change if there is a shocking Ethereum narrative. But as I'm going to show you very soon, it's Bitcoin again that seems to have the, the catalyst going for it. And not Ethereum. My best guess, my best bet was that this launch of the Spud ETF is going to be the, the catalyst for Ethereum. And it wasn't the case at all. Also, by the way, uh, one more thing that which is also very hopeful for the altcoiners, that if this red trend line is going to hold, then I would even say that Ethereum can go 0.1 versus Bitcoin. Um, and again, it, the way how it should happen is that it will first stay for months on the red trend line and only then it will start going first doubtfully in a doubtful way and then fast versus Bitcoin. So again, it, it's, I think it's going to take another year to build a, a really good momentum. And the question is, will this cycle last a year? That's another question, but not for this slide. Uh, so altcoins conclusions. And since this uh, part of the presentation has been going on for far longer, like it's such, it sucks that like I can never talk less. I'm sorry guys, but anyway, I will split this presentation into parts again. I'm really sorry, uh, but I will do my best the next parts to really fly out my altcoins conclusions. So, um, Overall, altcoin is behaving increasingly faster like pump and dump scheme. From my experience, I can tell you from many altcoins, I have tried dozens of altcoins. And like my biggest position at the start of the year was Luxo, which had all the tech and the team stuff going for it. And it actually kind of like rack pulled in the middle of the Bitcoin parabolic movement. So shocking thing. And also the other altcoins, the lifespan of the new altcoins is shorter and shorter and more and more are coming. So like altcoins is getting a, a really harder and harder and harder to play. More and more altcoins are coming, some with 500 million market cap and Bitcoin dominance is still not collapsing, even though it's unfair battle. Bitcoin dominance holding strong is actually unbelievable achievement. Uh, 2017-18 was altcoin hyper bubble. There I am reasonably sure with this statement. Uh, technically not yet fully bearish, uh, altcoins versus Bitcoin. Um, and it will be all possible. It will be all about possible altcoin catalyst if there will be some. But BTC has already next a huge catalyst and that is the possible reserve currency for the USA. And with red, the, the sentence, what do altcoins have? And I have a tweet here uh, from the Bitcoin conference where uh, where Trump said that uh, yeah he's going to do uh, he's going to do Bitcoin backing etc something like uh, uh, Kennedy was saying as well and has been saying but Kennedy has been saying it in a much more intelligent intelligent and doable way. Trump says that just as a promise because of his mouth just to get the numbers. Anyway, altcoins conclusions. Uh, that's pretty much it. But this picture here as well, just for a demonstration, uh, like this is the new listed bit, uh, Binance altcoins since the start of the year. And minus 74%, minus 65%, minus 69%, minus 56%, minus 75%, minus 17%, minus 81%. I don't have to continue. This is just showing you how much harder the altcoin game is playing. So if you want to continue to play that game or or go to play that game, uh, keep that in mind. 
And that concludes the first part of my presentation that was, well, what is altcoins? The next part is going to be about crypto markets. And I will do in the, the next part, I will do bullish and bearish at the same time. So I will release it probably very, very soon because some of these arguments that I'm going to show will get outdated very soon, very quickly. So I have to present it. So uh, have a good day. Thank you for watching.